Welcome back, students. Now that we have an understanding of the distribution of our variables and the different levels of measurement that we could observe, we need to think about how we could summarize in a single number or a single statement what's going on with our variables. And that leads us to discussions of both central location or central tendency and dispersion or variation. So with this video here, we're going to talk about just central location or central tendency. And in the video follows, we'll talk about dispersion. So let's go ahead and get started. So what we're going to talk about are the measures of central tendency, the mode, the median, and the mean, how we're going to obtain and compare our measurements, and we're going to talk about how these different measures of central tendency have an impact on the shape of our distribution. So to begin with, the mode is simply the most frequently occurring value in a distribution. For example, if you had a random set of student ages, 20, 21, 30, 20, 22, 20, 21, 20, so just a random group of students, and if you clustered them by the number of 19-year-olds, 20-year-olds, 21-year-olds, 22-year-olds, etc. you had, you could quickly see the most frequently occurring value. The most frequently occurring value is the mode. And in this case, the mode is 20. There's four 20-year-olds, two 21-year-olds, one 22-year-old, and a 30-year-old. So there's more 20-year-olds than any other possible category age of student. Now, it's possible, of course, to have bimodal distributions where you have the same number of observations being the maximum number of observations within any one category. So if you think of the scores on a quiz here, 96, 91, 96, 90, 93, 90, 96, and 90, if you sort those, you'll quickly realize that you have three observations of 90, one of 91, one of 93, and then three observations of 96. The fact that you have the greatest number of observations either being 90 or 96 means you have a bimodal distribution. If your level of measurement is nominal, then where you have named categories, the mode is the only measure of central tendency that you can possibly observe. The median, or the middle case in the distribution, is appropriate for ordinal and interval level data. Now, how do you get to find the median? What we're going to need to do is we're going to ask ourselves the number of cases that we have. And if we have an even number of cases, we're going to need to find, once we sort them in ascending order, the middle two cases, and then we're going to need to average them. And if we have an odd number of observations, once we sort them in ascending order, we're going to need to find the one in the center of the distribution, the one that will leave an equal number of observations above it and below it. So remember, the definition of the median is the point in your distribution where half your observations are above and half your observations are below. So to begin with, you need to sort all of the observations in increasing amounts of whatever property that variable is measuring. And then we can figure out the location of the median by using the formula n plus 1 times 0 0.5. Interestingly, this formula actually works for finding any percentile rank. If we wanted to find, for example, the 25th or 75th percentile, we would just change it to n plus 1 times 0 0.25 for the 25th percentile, or n plus 1 times 0 0.75 for the uh, 75th percentile. All right, so imagine we had some data on the number of years that uh, prisoners had spent in prison. And our first observation, spent one year in prison, and then someone who spent five years, two years, nine years, 13 years, 14, or excuse me, 11, and then four. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find out the location of the median, and we'll use our formula, n plus 1 times 0 0.5, or divided by 2. We have seven observations, so we're going to add 7 plus 1, which is going to be 8, divided by 2, or times 0 0.5, and that tells us that once we sort our observations in ascending order, the median will occupy the same location as the fourth observation. So when we sort them in ascending order, you can count off one, two, four, five. Five is our fourth observation. And you notice that the number five, the observation who spent five years in prison, has three observations with lower values and three observations with higher values. So it's at the point where half the observations are above and half the observations are below. Now it's also possible that we could be looking for an even number of cases. And if we're looking for an even number of cases, imagine you had this sequence here. 
1122-3446. And so you can see that we have eight observations. So when we look for the median, we're going to use again the same formula, which is n plus 1. So we have eight observations, plus 1 is going to be 9, times 0 0.5, or divided by 2, is going to tell us 4.5. So once we have them in ascending order, we're looking for the four and a half observation, or somewhere between the fourth and the fifth observation. Now the fourth observation is a 2, and the fifth observation is a 3. So we interpolate these two values. We just take the average of them. So we take 2 plus 3, which is 5, divided by 2 is 2.5. That means our median, the point at which half our observations are above and half our observations are below, is two and a half years in prison. The next measure of central location I want to talk to you about is the mean, which is only appropriate for interval level variables. And it's the calculation that will allow us to figure out the average as you typically would understand it. The symbol for the sample mean is x bar, and it equals the sum, that's the sigma sign, the sum of all of the observations of x, that's what the x sub i means, divided by n. So essentially, all the formula is telling us to do is add up all of the values of x, or for every observation we have, for the variable x that we're interested in, add them up, and then we're going to divide by the total number of observations. So going back to our prison sentence example, let's say we had four observations. Our first observation, the prisoner was sentenced to 4.6 years. In the second observation, they were sentenced to 7.9 years. In the third observation, 11.4, and in the final observation, 2.2. So to calculate the mean, we're adding up all of the x's, so 4 plus 4.6 plus 7.9 plus 11.4 plus 2.2, and we divide by 4. And in this case, we get 6.53 or 6.53 years is the average sentence. So now when we think about these different measures of central tendency, what we want to do is we want to think about the role that the level of measurement plays in helping us determine what the appropriate measure of central tendency is. And these, central, these measures of central tendency will help us understand the shape or the form of the distribution. Your goal here with your central tendency might vary relative to whatever your research objective is, but usually what we would want is the measure of central location that provides us the greatest amount of information. And as you learn from our levels of measurement, we have the least amount of information from nominal level measurements, and we get increasing more with ordinal because we then understand it at rank order, and we get increasing amounts of information again as we move to the interval ratio level because now we understand the exact distances we can see there's a measure of central location appropriate across the levels of measurement. So the mode, you can get a mode for nominal, ordinal, and interval and ratio level measurement. But when you think about the median, the point where half your observations are above and below, you can only find a median for ordinal or interval slash ratio level measurement. And finally, the mean, because it's based on the mathematical properties of the variable, can only be calculated for interval and ratio level measurement. Un having an understanding of your mean, median, and mode will help us understand the shape of the distribution. Because in an ideal world, in a truly symmetrical distribution, the mode, the median, and the mean all have identical values. In skewed data, the measures of central tendency are different. The mean tends to be heavily influenced by more extreme outliers. So what happens when the mean is higher than the median the long tail is being pulled in the direction of the mean. And when the mean is lower than the median, the long tail is being pulled again in the direction of the mean, but this time in a negative direction. So when we look for skewness, we're looking for skewness typically with values at the interval and ratio level of measurement. And our mean, what's pulling our mean in either direction, a positive direction or a negative direction, is the influence of outliers or more extreme values. Okay, so when you think about which measure of central location, it's also important to think about what your research objective is. Your choice of reported uh, central tendency depends on the level of the precision you require for your estimate. For example, think about household income. You could have a measure of household income that looks at the average of all earners in your civic area. However, you might live in an area that might be heavily influenced by high income or low income earners. And as a result, you think that the best measure of central location 
even though you're at the interval level of measurement, is in fact the median because that tells you the point where half your observations are above and half the observations are below. It tells you essentially the midpoint of earners in your area. A lot of published research requires both the median and the mean calculations. And some people would claim the median provides a more balanced view. And for advanced statistical analysis, sometimes people prefer the mean or with large data sets. However, my strong advice to you, the student, is this. Present both the median and the mean and talk about the shape of your distribution. All right, so we've covered our three measures of central tendency, the mode, the median, and the mean. We've thought about factors that determine the appropriate level of measurement, the level of measurement, the shape of the distribution, and the research objective. Very good. So I would follow this up once you've pondered it with the next video, which is on our measures of dispersion or variation. We'll talk to you soon.